In this video, we'll cover how does the mini air pump inside the suction cup device work, how does the air travel, as you'll see here with the arrows, and how do the chambers and pumps work that govern it. This video belongs to a playlist called the Mental Mechanism Library, in which we're going to study products all around us, figure out how they work internally, and save their mechanisms in our Mental Mechanism Library. This is going to make you a better mechanical design engineer. Big picture, the PCB that you see here in green is constrained by these U-shaped ribs, which you see here and here and also on the other half. So the PCB is nice and sturdy. Now, when you place the force on this trigger, the trigger has an axis point, which is this post, and the force will travel through this fin and come in contact with this switch. When the switch is actuated, the PCB will turn the motor on and it will vacuum the air from the cup. Let's watch it. To understand how the mini air pump works, which is the core mechanism of this device, first I'll take you to the whiteboard and I'm going to show you a simple diagram of an air pump that utilizes one piston. This utilizes three pistons. This is a cross section of how a pump works. We have a flap number one, it's a one-way valve over here, flap number two attached to the piston, also a one-way valve, and the piston is going to move left and right continuously. We must understand that this flap that's attached to the piston, it can be closed, but it could also open. And when it opens, it lets air that way. But when the air wants to go the other way, the flap, it's a one-way air valve, so it will block the air from going in that direction because of these two faces coming in contact. So air cannot go towards the left. We have a lot of air that's inside the chamber. When the piston moves left, the air is going to flow out because this valve, the flap will open and the air will vent in that direction. It will blow it out, so it will keep on going and going. But one thing to take into consideration, this is a high pressure area and it will not allow the air to go in this direction, so that's blocked. So the air just keeps on coming out keeps on coming out, going, going, going until you get to this point. Now, when you start going towards the right, no air can go that way because of what we mentioned before, these two faces coming in contact with each other. So this is a one wave out. And what happens is that as it goes towards the right, air needs to come in to fill that void. And that's where this flap opens on the left and it creates a vacuum. All the air has to get filled again. And it goes to the right. And it repeats over and over again. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that in our device, we'll have a chamber that's the vacuum chamber. So hopefully this helps you understand how one pump works. In our device, we have three of them. We have two pathways for the air. The air going in, getting sucked in, and the air coming out. Air in green and red, red out. So let's tear this apart. Once we open this, we see that we have a motor that's converting rotational motion. This is rotating, and there's a shaft inserted off center in there. And it's converting the torque, the rotational motion, into translational motion, because that shaft being connected to that coupler, once it spins, to this spidget, fidget spinner looking part, is creating translational motion. The, here are the three pumps, remember the diagram, and as it rotates, each pump goes up and down, up and down. When the pump goes down, it creates a vacuum inside the vacuum chamber, which is in here, remember that diagram? So when this part goes down, air is exiting through this flap, there's a little hole in there, and that's why I colored it red. Red means air going out, and green means air coming in. So there's air gonna, gonna be coming into this chamber, and I'll show you how where that air comes from, but first, I'm gonna teach you the pathway out. So air is coming out of here. The next part that connects to that. Is this one. 
and as you can see the red coming out goes through there so it's going out coming out through there and I thought this was pretty clever this is the second uh, layer of flaps so these flaps are a one-way valve and allow the air to come out so the air keeps on coming out it's going to converge to that hole and one thing to keep in mind is that we have these walls that separate the pathways of the air. So all the red air, the air coming out is gonna be in here, separated by those walls. I don't know if the camera can capture it, but there's a uh, little ribs in here that separate the chambers. And it's gonna converge onto the air and the air is going to come out. Now let's look at the pathway in. This was inserted there. So this is the suction. Air is going in through here And then it's in this green chamber and there it's going to go in there it's going to go in through there the green hole it's all separated by chambers so it's going to come in here so this is the vacuum chamber and i'll show you a more detailed view on cad so you'll understand the air in is actually pretty simple it's one hole that gets connected to the suction cup that was um, that I'm not showing right now. The hole continues through here. Next up, the hole continues through here, and it continues, and it continues until it gets to the chamber. Now, when it gets to the chamber, the vacuum chamber, the air is going to exit and go upwards. Now let's follow the red pathway, which is the way out. Why does there exit? Because it has a flap, as I showed you before in the diagram, and it's a one-way valve, which only allows the air to go upwards. So let's uh, follow step by step. I'm going to hide the bottom. We're going upwards. So after this, there's a flap, which I didn't model, but it goes upwards. It goes past this chamber. It enters through these uh, little holes that I have mark marked down red when I did the tear down. And ultimately it converges, the, the air exits through the main tube, the red one. Now I'm gonna show you how I model this. This is a master model inside another master model. So the first master model was what you're looking at right now, which means I had multiple parts inside a part file which I model all at once and then I did save bodies at the very end export them all individually and made an assembly from that but I also made another master model for the mini pump because those are a lot of parts too that's my preferred method of doing multiple parts that fit with each other so now let's take a step back and I'm gonna walk you through some of the techniques that I utilized let's roll it all the way up first thing I did I we don't have a 3d scanner for this for this project, so I decided to manually do it by taking orthogonal pictures. It's a picture from the side. I actually used the box picture. And then we look at a top image. And I want to make sure that you're able to see the surfaces that I was making. So I traced it, I made a surface, the same process from the top, traced it, and I made a surface. There they are. The same exact thing from the back. I pasted the picture, did a surface. So we have three surfaces intersecting, and now we did one of my favorite features, the intersect feature. And I told SolarWorks I wanted to make a solid body from the part on the inside. So I'm gonna hide all the surfaces. I'm gonna show you the solid body. And this is what I had. So now it's starting to shape up like the actual device. Surfaces. Um, did some fillets, surface knit, put it all together, and then I split it so we can have half and half. The thickening, so we have this now on the inside, the thickening, a lot of delete faces, added the ribs. Out of the PCB, a cool trick I'm going to show you here, link in the description, is how you can add a decal 
to an image, um, a face, so it looks like a PCB. It gives it looks a, a really nice look. Then I did a revolve around for the cup. I used the split feature to give it that curvature that it has in real life. I did a sweat feature. Details are nice. So the cup actually looks like that. It doesn't look like this in person. So I wanted to add that sweep feature for the thumbnail of the YouTube video. Details matter. Fillets and say bodies. Now let's look at how I modeled this part was pretty much just reverse engineering straightforward and at the end I have a 3D sketch and I separate the sketch and I give it colors. The way that the fastener was concealed is by using a sticker logo to cover where the fastener is.